Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. For nearly two years, students have been forced to plan the future of their educations via a computer screen. But as Tate Lakecraft reports, a local post-secondary school is giving students a taste for the in-person experience. After offering open house programs online due to the pandemic, Lakeland College will open its doors to prospective students in March. Recruitment and enrollment specialist Courtney King says it's an opportunity that the college isn't taking for granted. It's not the same doing the virtual events and the virtual tours, so we are really um, refreshed to be able to start showing those students exactly what we offer at Lakeland. In anticipation of the open house, the college is currently offering private tours via bookings. Those who attend the program info sessions in March will also be given the opportunity to apply without cost on campus. It will give students a chance to meet with their, their academic advisors, meet their instructors, fellow students. They'll also get a chance to sit in classrooms and hear about their programs. And for some, it'll be a chance to do some, a little bit of hands-on um, to give them a taste of what it's going to be like to come to school next year. Lakeland's Lloydminster campus will host its program info session on March 10th, while the Vermilion campus will welcome prospective students on March 11th. For Primetime Local News, I'm Tate Lakecraft. The city is considering increasing rental fees for city parks and green spaces. City administration is suggesting a 3% increase in the rental rates for soccer and ball fields, Weaver Campground and plots at the Lloydminster Cemetery. The rates would increase gradually from this year into 2023. This is the first time the city has increased these fees since 2019. You have a couple choices in business. You can increase price, you can cut costs, or you can take less profit. In the city's perspective, it's we can increase cost, we can decrease service, or we can come up with an average somewhere in between. And at this point, it's been a slight increase in cost to keep the same level of service. The city says the increases are needed to cover operating costs, including the cost of fuel. Officials add the new fees are in line with those of other communities in Alberta and Saskatchewan. One of the good things with the city is we're able to use a buying group through our association, which helps with gas and electricity. It doesn't take the complete sting out of it, I can tell you, but it certainly helps. City Council is expected to improve the increases at a future Council meeting. The Lloydminster Learning Council is offering a new class for ages 4 to 6 starting next week. Our Nicole Gruber has more. Today for Primetime Local News, I'm joined with Rebecca Robinson with the Lloydminster Learning Council to talk about their upcoming course starting next week, Fun with Numbers. Thank you so much, Rebecca, for joining me here today. Oh, thank you for having us. So first, do you mind letting us know a little bit more about this course and what it's all about? Sure. Uh, so uh, beginning um, Thursday, March 3rd, for six weeks on Thursdays from 10 to 11 a.m. Um, online uh, through Zoom, we have our Fun with Numbers program. This is a free program that is funded through the Saskatchewan, through the government of Saskatchewan. Um, the Lloydminster Learning Council Association is a designated family literacy hub. So this is one of our programs that we offer. Um, Fun with Numbers in particular is looking at the development of numeracy skills, where a lot of our other programs are more about uh, oral communication and rhymes that bind and books for babies is more focused on early um, literacy. Um, so specifically with Fun with Numbers, they learn those early uh, numeracy skills, such as the cutting, counting, they read books and sing songs all related to literacy. Um, when they register, they, can, they get this package and the facilitators uh, will go through each week what activities to do with their child while they're completing it online uh, through Zoom. Okay, and so when will it be running again and how long will it be going for? So it starts uh, on Thursday, March 3rd uh, until April 7th um, and it's for six weeks. So every Thursday from 10 to 11 a.m. Um, and it's on Zoom. Um, and if anyone is interested in registering, they can visit our website at lloydlearningcouncil.org or they can also call our office as well. 
And because this is an online format, it may be a little bit more difficult for uh, parents and kids to be able to follow along. How are you guys hoping to make this as easy as possible for them? Um, well, yes, <laughs> online is always a little tricky, especially trying to uh, keep the attention of little ones. But um, the facilitators, this is our uh, fifth time offering it online, I think. Um, so we have a whole set up with a webcam and everything. So it, there's the overview of their hands to show them uh, how they're supposed to do the activity. And it's really good too, because uh, sometimes kids are in uh, play school at that time. Um, so we also encourage parents, even if their kids can't attend, and um, they can still register for the class and pick up their kit. And there's all the information and breakdown of what each lesson plan is so that they can do it on their own time as well. You showed us that little bag at the beginning. What sort of things will be offered in that? So we have some scissors, uh, left-handed and right-handed scissors. And um, there's some Play-Doh. Um, we have a ruler, some dice, uh, some flashcards. Um, yeah, a bunch of uh, tracing your uh, worksheets for tracing numbers. There's a whole bunch of goodies in there. <laughs> And you guys offer so many different courses. So what is the Lloydminster Learning Council hoping to achieve by offering this particular course? The Lloydminster Learning Council Association, one of our major funders is the government of Alberta through the Community Adult Learning Program, our designated CALP. So uh, we offer classes in technology, world languages, English language learning, and of course, family literacy. Um, and in our family literacy classes, so Books for Babies and Rhymes That Bind, it's teaching parents how to teach their kids. Uh, so it's teaching the adults, which will then have that trickle down effect to the kids. And being a border city, we're also funded by the government of Saskatchewan, thankfully, as well. And they do fun with numbers. So family literacy, it's more everyone is learning. Um, so the kids, this one is a bit more kids focused compared to parents, but there's also those supports on how to reinforce what they learned in the class into their everyday regular life. So that the learning that they've learned in the class is extended beyond that hour that they spend together for those six weeks, throughout that six weeks. And what ages is this class recommended for? Uh, so... Uh, we try to target four to six year olds for this class, um, just that pre learning right before kindergarten uh, grade one. But if any families are older, have older kids that are struggling with foundational numeracy, we're happy to include them as well. And is there any other classes like this that are similar that are going on at the same time? In March, we just have our fun with numbers program and then at the beginning of April, we'll be running another session of Rhymes That Bind, um, and the specific dates for those are all on our website, and uh, so people, are, if they're interested, are welcome to register as well. Is there anything else that you would like to let people know about this course? I think that's it. If anyone ever has any questions about extending their learning or what supports are available for family literacy or English language learning or world languages or technology, we're happy to help. If you don't know the answer, we're happy to refer to partner organizations or find out the answer for you. Well, thank you again, Rebecca, for coming on and doing this with me. Oh, perfect. Thank you so much, Nicole. Now for a first look at tonight's weather forecast, we'll go to Shelby Clark. much jazz and now taking a first look at your weather forecast here in the border city hopefully everybody is having a good thursday today we are sitting at minus 14 and with the winter we aren't seeing too much today so it is feeling closer to minus 16 but not too bad whatsoever we are seeing a warmer day today compared to earlier on in the weekend we did see a slightly a little bit more sun but it did get a little bit cloudier on throughout the day and you can see that it has even started having some light snowfall starting off later on through the evening and we will be seeing them continue that through the evening as well and switching over to temperatures across the region for Alberta and Saskatchewan on the Alberta side we're seeing some warmer temperatures compared to yesterday for sure uh, most places are seeing around minus 11 minus 12 degrees it is minus 8 down in Provost and Wainwright while Vagreville and up in Lac La Biche they're at minus 9 degrees and in Edmonton is seeing minus 7 now switching over to our Saskatchewan side here they're seeing some slightly cooler temperatures most spots seeing those double digit temps minus 12 up in Isle La Crosse as well as in Pierceland, minus 13 in Green Lake, while Meadow Lake and St. Walberg are at minus.
minus 14, minus 15. Maidstone is slightly cooler at minus 17. While down in Macklin, they are seeing the warmest at minus 8. And North Battleford is actually seeing the coolest with minus 19. And for North Battleford overnight, they will be going down to a low of minus 24. So they will be cooling down quite a bit. Uh, they will be seeing a little bit more cloudier skies. And tomorrow, they will be seeing an even warmer day for their Friday at minus 10 throughout the day with a mix of some sun and cloud. For Cold Lake overnight, they'll be going down to a low of minus 21, so they will be cooling down just slightly as well. But we are seeing some better evening temperatures that we have been seeing with that extreme cold warning earlier on in the week. And tomorrow, they will be seeing minus 6 throughout the day, so they will be seeing a, a, a way warmer day tomorrow for their Friday with a little bit more sun peeking behind those clouds. And for us in the Border City, we'll be going down to a low of minus 20, so we will be cooling down, but not too bad. And tomorrow, we will be seeing minus 7, and we will be seeing a sunnier day to start off our weekend. And switching over to our three-day forecast for here in the border city as i was saying we'll be seeing a sunnier day for friday to start it off there then saturday we will be seeing that minus five that will continue into sunday and we will be seeing some cloudier skies for both saturday and sunday that's the first look at your weather forecast our jasmine king will have more news coming up after the break Well, the Lloydminster Bobcats played their final game on home ice for the 2021-22 regular season. The team hosted their Northeast rival, the Bonneville Pontiacs, in a game that meant more than just hockey. Evan Kenny reports. In partnership with the Lloydminster Co-op and Kindness Wins, the Lloydminster Bobcats hosted their second ever Pink the Rink Night on Wednesday. A sea of pink filled the Civic Center. Everyone from fans to family and even the mayor took part in the festivities. You know, it was just great to see so many people out and, and a full house and, um, you know, obviously the message uh, of, you know, the, to stop bullying and, and I think that was a big part tonight and, um, you know, it was all over the lobby when he walked in with the positive messages and, and having a couple different groups up there. And Ahead of puck drop, the first annual Bob Troop Memorial Scholarship was awarded to Chad McLean. Um, you know, he was always Trooper's uh, best buddy on, on off the ice and, uh, you know, in the penalty box. So um, pretty cool to see it go to Chad, and, and uh, that was a selection by the Troop family, and, and I think that's pretty special. The Bonneville Pontiacs would get two unanswered in the first and leave the Border City with a 5-2 to two victory. I, I didn't think that we came out with a lot of jam in our game in the first period. Um, obviously a packed house tonight, and then you want to... You know, feed off that energy, and, and I thought that uh, you know we fought the puck a little bit, and then got away from uh, just just habits that we need to have in our structure to, to be successful. And Thursday and Friday nights, the Bobcats will look to bounce back as they finish off the regular season in Drayton Valley. Evan Kenny, Primetime Local Sports. Now we will be taking a look at your pet pictures. Thank you to everyone who submitted the pictures of their pets to our Facebook page throughout the week and we will be giving away a pet pad gift card tomorrow. We want to see your pets. Send photos of your pet and their name to our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram to have them featured on Pet of the Day. Your name will be entered into a weekly draw for a gift certificate from the Pet Pad. I am so pleased to be joined today by a friend of our show. We haven't spoken with him for a while, but Rafi Jag is with us today. Rafi, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me again. Well, you have been all over the place. Uh, I'd like to say that, you know, you've kind of kept in Lloydminster and had a break, but you certainly haven't. Uh, let's go back to December and talk about your trips overseas and, and the contest that you're in. How did that all go? 
Yes, yeah, so I was in Dubai for the Golden Voice and um, I was there competing on the grand finals with um, 20 other finalists from all over the world. And I'm very happy to say that um, out of the 20 contestants, um, I won four of the major awards um, with the championship there and I won best male vocalist of the world. And I actually took home these three trophies as well as um, a record, as well as some recording contracts, which I now have a new album coming up because of that. And yeah, it's just it's a surreal experience. And right after the competition, I was invited by um, one of their shakes there to um, have a nice just um, sightseeing experience on his yacht. So that was insane. Yeah. Well, congratulations. It's it's just amazing everything that every time I talk to you, you're just it's more and more you're winning things, you have more contracts. Uh, your life is never dull. And now you're telling me you're packing to go to the Philippines. So uh, what yeah. are you going to be doing there? So in the Philippines, I'm going to be um, recording the music video for my um, OPM, original um, Pinoy music single, Hanggang Langit. And I'm hoping to shoot some um, shots for my upcoming album. And I'm actually releasing my single from um, our makers here in Canada, Velveteen Music, which is my love. And I'm excited to share that as well. So do I dare I ask what comes next for you? I mean, you have all these things going, you're winning these competitions. Uh, are you ever going to be able to get to a point where you can maybe slow down for a bit? Or are you planning on touring now that things are relaxing a little bit with COVID? What's what's your path, I guess, over the next little while? Um, my next um, goal, I guess you could say, as you said, um, things are um, dying down with COVID, which I'm very thankful for. And I've wanted to tour for a while. So um, we're getting that in the works. So hopefully I could um, tour Canada or even the Philippines or wherever it, it may be. And um, I'm hoping to go back to Dubai again this year. So that's really, really exciting. And um, if I may, um, I actually have an event in December in the Philippines and I'm guesting and as well helping. So I'm looking for um, other contestants and other talents internationally who would like to be a part of another international um, world championship event. So how do people reach out to you if they want to get involved with that? What's the best way to get in touch with you? And, and how are you going to decide, I guess, who qualifies to help you with that type of event? Will you have your own talent show where people can perform and then you decide? Or how are you going to work out who can come and join you? Well, for that, I um, have my team that has been working with me um, diligently over the past few years and I really really trust them so um, I have my producers who will um, screen screen everyone who would like to join and the easiest way to contact me is through my social media which is Rafi Jag and that's the same for all my music and all my music is streaming on all platforms so well, and what do you say to people who are from smaller communities like Lloyd Minster and think, you know, geez, it's going to be really difficult if I want to have a career in music and be an entertainer. Clearly, you're an inspiration for people like that. So what do you tell them, Rafi? What do you say is the best advice to get started and, and help, you know, make a name for themselves in this business? Well, um, for me, apart from motivation and that want to um, succeed in the industry, um, the only thing I could say is take action because um, no matter how small the town is, how um, large uh, you're trying to get at, just taking action and taking that leap of faith will take you very, very far. So, and you'll never know if you don't try, right? So. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations again on all your accomplishments. It's always amazing to speak with you. And once again, if we can just get you to repeat uh, your social media handle so people can find you and follow you uh, and see where your career is going. What's the best way to do that? Once again, Rafi. Yes, so to stay updated on all my projects and my music, my social media, um, all of it is at Rafi Jag, R-A-F-I-J-A-G. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Good luck. And I know we'll be chatting with you again soon. Thank you so much.
Furniture Set and Design supplied by Furniture Gallery and Furniture House, downtown Lloydminster. Joining us today for Primetime Local News is Sarah Cades, Calgary author of Wild Not Broken. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Of course, we're glad to be able to have you on here. Now for this book, Wild Not Broken, this is the second book in your Heartstone series, correct? Yep. Yes, it is. And I want to start off with asking, what can fans expect with the second book? Actually, really fast paced, lots of action, um, but also lots of uh, pretty pretty cool uh, character development, including some heat. There's, there's some heat to it. Um, yeah, but uh, really fast action, lots of twists and turns. Um, the landscape, uh, the land, Mum Earth play um, some pretty significant parts and family, family dynamics, some good family dynamics, some not as good family dynamics um, are all in the mix for a, a bit of a roller coaster ride. Yeah. And since the release, how has support been from readers? Actually, it's been beautiful. It's, um, it's been really beautiful. I, I actually wrote a, a narrative nonfiction with one of Calgary's active duty homicide detectives. And people have noticed that my fiction writing actually is, is a bit grittier, a bit, um, it, it has shifted, it has pivoted as I've grown as an author, including that experience, right? Because you grow with every project you do. Um, yeah, so this one, I, I, I'm act I took more, more risks, more artistic risks, um, more character risks, and had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun writing this, but it also, I'll be honest, it totally kicked my butt. Some, pro some books like just like they fall out of you and others kind of make you work for it the whole way. And um, book three, which is coming out in June, that like fell out of me. And this one, the characters, um, yeah, were a bit more coy. I don't know if that makes sense to, to your um, audience, but yeah, this one, uh, yeah, characters were a bit more coy, which, which I'm hoping is a really fabulous reader experience. But yeah, the, the, sport, the support has been great. People love um, having a book set here, like in Alberta, um, folks really resonate well with it. Um, yeah, it's it's a different sort of read. And, and uh, yeah, so far, great. <laughs> and it is interesting to know, you know, when many people think about authors, they think that usually it's very easy for their books to, you know, come out and be able to write so easily. But it's interesting to know that you can still have that writer's block and it's still a lot of effort to put into these novels. Yeah. If there's any uh, writers in the crowd or aspiring writers in the crowd who haven't dipped their toe in, like, man, honor your process and um, jump in whatever that looks like and, and really trust and honor your process. And yeah, this, this book, I, this book definitely took me to school. Like it was such a beautiful learning experience. Actually, my, my publisher will attest. I'm like, oh my gosh, Mark, it's kicking my butt. But he was super supportive and yeah, it came around and I'm really pleased and I've gotten, yeah, really beautiful feedback. So it's good. And for people unaware that may have not have heard of the Heartstone series and they kind of want to check it out, can you kind of explain the plot of it? Yeah, yeah. So the first one actually has an archaeologist who does lots of work in northern Alberta, which I was an archaeologist and did lots of work in northern Alberta. Uh, we talked a bit about Edmonton before. Um, yes, I have flown in and out of Edmonton and, and up to Fort Mac many, many times. Um, yeah, so it's about an archaeologist who actually helps an estranged um, oil baron father, an environmentalist daughter, and through that, his own family seek it, start unraveling, and then book two, they unravel kind of catastrophically, <laughs> which is great, and sets up book three. Um, so yeah, there are, the, there are those undercurrents of family secrets being revealed, but also lots of healing happening. So I always like to leave readers with in a, in a good place, right? Like I want it to be a super satisfying book with um, lots of twists and turns and lots of conflict and, and tension, of course. That's, I mean, that's why we read books, right? That's why we love storytelling, but also leave, leave readers really satisfied and, and, and happy happy and hopeful too. So yeah, so the first one starts with uh, an archaeologist. So if there's any archaeology fans in the crowd, they might dig dig that one. And of course, it's Alberta, the tension between um, oil and the environment, like that polarity doesn't have to rip us apart. And I've been so fortunate, actually, in, in my day job to work with really extraordinary people that, you know, if you listen to the media headlines, they're supposed to hate each other. But man, do they work well together and, and really work for solutions. So um, yeah, so that those are also I, my books I demand a lot from actually I want to cover a lot of ground and do um, 
a lot of socially responsible things with them. So yeah, um, lots of twists and turns. And as more of your fans read the second book, do you, do you expect to see that same reaction for your third one and from what you've seen from your first book? I do, I do. Um, I do these, so this series is about, um, the, the linking thread is the adult children of divorced parents, which is actually pretty, pretty common, <laughs> you know, like that's not um, super unique, but each of these characters, um, have lots of inner dynamics going on and meet with really, really fascinating partners that really challenge them and bring out the best, they bring out the best in each other with each. So the series has, um, um, each of the siblings has their own book. And if you love the secondary characters, just wait, they'll get their own book. Um, and I love, I love writing series as an author because I fall in love with my characters and I, I, I want to keep, I want to keep exploring and see what, what, ride they take me on what adventure they take me on and and i've gotten similar feedback from readers so this series it's great because because you get to hang out with those characters quite a while perfect sarah well once again congrats on your second book you're saying a bit earlier that it was a lot of work to get through and is there anything else you'd like to add that i may have missed out on um actually alberta has an amazing writing um community so if you want to um check out books by albertans like it's kind of like a hotbed of authors here. It's an amazing province to be a writer in. Um, support your local writers. They are brilliant, lovely, um, smart, interesting people. So go check out. And who knows how many Lloydminster, I imagine that you've got this, a pocket of awesome writers in Lloydminster too. So yeah, check out your Alberta and Saskatchewan writers. Once again, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me on. Now ending off with taking another quick look at your seven day forecast. Expect to see some more sun tomorrow to start off our weekend at minus seven. Then we will be seeing that minus five throughout the weekend with a little bit more cloudier skies. So make sure you're enjoying a warmer weekend that we will be having coming up. Then we will be seeing minus four for Monday and Tuesday with a high chance of some flurries through next week. Thank you, Shelby, and thank you for joining us on Primetime Local News this hour. And we'll have more again at six.